<laughs> hey, hello, hello, hello. Okay, go get Dad. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Hi. Oh. <laughs> okay, go get Dad. Hello, welcome to the Creative Obsession Podcast. My name is Carrie, and I'm coming to you from just outside of Portland, Oregon. Today is March 30th, and um, it is a, no, it's the 29th. It's Wednesday. I normally record on Thursdays, but um, I needed to record today for different reasons. So today's Wednesday, March 29th. I probably won't get this edited and up until tomorrow the 30th, so I think that's where my brain was, but anyway. Um, this is my little channel where I talk about knitting and quilting and craftiness and creativity. If you're new, thank you for checking me out. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. Uh, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and then you'll get notifications um, when I have new episodes. I try and record every other week and for the most part I do that. So anyway, all that stuff out of the way. <laughs> Um, I do have a Ravelry group for the Creative Obsession podcast, and I would encourage you to go there, join the group. Um, I'm going to be talking in a little bit about a um, knit along that I am co-hosting. So there'll be information in there, and I'm trying to get better about setting things up to have a little more of a conversation. <laughs> so... Um, please join me there if you are so inclined. Um, I like to start the podcast with the quilt that I have on the wall. And today's quilt is brought to you by... No. Um, this is a quilt I made for my mom last year or the year before. I can't remember exactly when. She had, um, at the time when I made it, she had just bought a little place at the beach um, as her little getaway, go to, hang out, relax, kind of a thing. And it had been a dream of hers for a very long time, and so it finally came to fruition, if you will. And, um, and so I was really excited for her, and so she was busy decorating it, and I thought, well, she needs a quilt, because doesn't everybody. <laughs> so I said, okay, what colors are you decorating in it? She says like the kind of aquas and teals and stuff. And, um, I'd gotten online to see what kind of fabrics I could find. And I found this fat quarter bundle and the line was called seascape soundscapes or something like that. And it was a bundle. It was all these fabrics. It was sand colors and water color fat quarter bundle. And so I got that without having any idea what I was going to make. And so um, it took me a little bit to kind of figure it out. And what I decided to do, because I like a challenge, and I seem to get more into a project if it's something that I put, I don't want to say put a restriction, but, but I challenge myself in some way. And so my challenge was I wanted to make a quilt that represented the beach where she's at. Um, she has a place at Rockaway Beach on the Oregon coast and just off the coast out in the ocean is what's called Twin Rocks and it's two big rocks. And I thought, okay, perfect. Let's try and do that. So um, I'll put a picture in here. We were just there over the weekend and so it's a picture I took that day of, of uh, what the rocks look like. So I then challenged myself. I wanted to see if I could make something using only half square triangles. Now a half square triangle is a, basically it's, is what it sounds like. It's half the square in a triangle. So two triangles make up a square. So that entire quilt is made up of only half square triangles. And so what I did was separate out my fabric based on color so you have the sand colors, browns and stuff, and separated it from the blues, and then set, further separated that into value. So I had lights and darks to give the idea of, of depth. And um, so 
I kind of sketched out on graph paper to give myself an idea of how I wanted it to look. I wanted it to look as if you were kind of looking down the beach. Um, and so you had the sand kind of going at an angle and then you're looking out into the ocean and all of that stuff. So using that idea, I uh, cut up all my fabrics and then just started kind of putting them together and putting them up on the design wall to play with where it needed to be light, where it needed to be dark, and, excuse me, tried to give the rocks some texture, tried to give everything some texture, and I am really, really happy with how it turned out. It was a lot of fun to work on. Um, it Easy to construct because you're just sewing triangles together to make squares and then sewing squares together, but... Um, getting it all laid out and getting all of the colors right where I wanted them was more of a challenge. So then I further quilted it trying to give the water like waves looking and the rocks have, I have like jaggedy kind of quilting and, and all of that. And I also did, I don't know if you can see over my shoulder, right about there. I, when I bound it, I changed the color of the binding. So all the way across the sand part is, um, in, a sand color and then all the way around the water and sky is a dark blue color and I made it so that the binding started and stopped right where those colors changed so I thought that was pretty cool it was the first time I'd ever done that it was challenging I um, sewed like the blue and the beige together lined that up with the seam and went as far around as I could and kind of as far around as I could did the same thing on the other side and went around and then where those met I then joined them so that I could get that seam right at where the seam was on the quilt so that's my mom's quilt um, I asked her to bring it back from the beach <laughs> the last time she was there I'm like I have to show your quilt so um, I that's one of the reasons why I'm recording today because I need to get it back to her because she's heading back over to the beach this weekend and um, that's her little like cozy up on the couch kind of a quilt so that is my beachy twin rocks quilt that's that's it <laughs> so um, I I find that having that challenge the same thing like I've talked about when I'm designing the bug quilt for my brother it's that whole challenge and trying to figure out what I can do within a parameter so um, yeah so that's your background backdrop for today I do have a bunch of stuff today so it may be a little bit of a longer episode um, which is good because the last couple of episodes have been pretty short and pretty um, shallow on content so I have a lot of finished objects believe it or not and I'm excited about that um, couple of upcomings and things like that. So um, I'm also going to be co-hosting a Cal, a knit along, and um, I want to talk to you about that because I hope you all join me. The uh, knit along that I'm co-hosting, I'm co-hosting it with Tracy of the Thimble and Thread Make podcast, and I've talked about Tracy before. Um, she started a knit along and it's the springtime shawl single skein knit along. The idea is to knit um, a lightweight shawl that you would wear in the springtime, not the big heavy keep you super warm kind of things. So use one skein of fingering weight yarn, 100 gram skein, and knit any, any shawl that you want. And so she has a thread going in her Ravelry group, and I opened a thread in my Ravelry group. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we will each um, pick prizes. Uh, I'm going to be offering a skein of my yarn out of my shop, winner's choice. So I'm not going to pick in case you want a different color than the one I would select. So you can pick any skein of yarn, not including sock blanks, if you really want a sock blank or... Um, something else then I will credit the amount of a skein towards that so I'm trying to get some other prizes as well so if you are a maker or a pattern designer or anything like that and you would like to donate anything to the knit along I would certainly appreciate it so you can go and check out what Tracy's got going over on her podcast group check out her podcast thimble and thread make and um, I think it's really good because we are getting into the season where things are slightly warming up, 
at least around here it's super rainy and gross out today but the sun does peek through a little more often than it used to <laughs> so that's encouraging so i wanted to share with you what i'm going to be knitting for the knit along i got um I'm sure a lot of you know Marsha from the Fairy Little podcast. She's also a pattern designer, and she just recently came out with the Stargazer shawl. And it takes one skein of yarn. It's got a lot of texture, which I love. And um, it's a little more lacy, so I think it'll be a lot more lightweight. So that's what I'm going to be making. And I decided I'm going to try, and I'm going to make it with a sock blank because I've never knitted a shawl with a sock blank and I figure why not now? Plus, I dyed this and I have to make something with it. I had dyed this with the intentions of it going in the shop, but once it came out and I saw what it looked like, I just I couldn't let it go because <laughs> I think it'll make a really pretty shawl. So it's kind of, um, galactic I guess and then you've got stargazer shawl I thought that the two went together really well so this shawl is a paid-for pattern and right now um, until April 1st she has where you can get a dollar off the pattern and um, on the pattern page it tells you how to do that so it takes um, a 2.75 mil needle which is a size 2 US 2 and I don't have a size 2 um, uh, on a cable so I just ordered on Amazon I'm gonna try the chow goo lace needles because I've heard a lot of good things about that and I should get that on Friday so then I can get started on this so it takes a size 2 needle and it takes a, approximately 435 yards the sock blanks have 460 so it should be plenty and I think it'll be beautiful and it'll be really interesting to see what this does on a shawl and then I get to use like as much uh, like tons of it because with socks you usually have a lot left over but not quite enough to do anything with and so that is my plan as soon as I get my needles I will um, get started on that so check out the stargazer cow where did I put it stargazer cow by Marsha Ibuki and she's very little. Um, she has a really good podcast too. This woman is like full of good information. She knits like super fast and gets a ton done. Like a sweater a month kind of a thing. Um, so anyway, check that out if you're interested. And I hope that you join the cow. The cow goes until May 15th. Um, she started it on March 15th, but I'm just now kind of getting on the bandwagon with it. But it's still plenty of time. It's plenty of time to make a one skein shawl because um, that's not very much so um, please check that out um, I also opened a thread in the Ravelry group um, I for book recommendations I like to read and I like to read um, when I'm going to bed to help me just kind of shut things off to get to sleep and I've just not found anything that I'm really liking lately and I thought well maybe some of you guys have some recommendations so I opened up a thread for book recommendations and if you could just put like the title of the book and maybe a little synopsis of what the story is or what type of story it is, whether it's a thriller or whatever. Um, I know a lot of us are readers and I think that that might help um, other people. So um, I'm looking forward to getting some recommendations because the stuff that I've been reading, I don't even get through it because I'm like, this just isn't grabbing me. And it could just be because I have a really, really hard time shutting my brain off. And so it's really got to be something that, that catches my interest to override that part of my brain that wants to keep working. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, um, go to the Ravelry group for the Creative Obsession and look for that thread as well. And I would really appreciate any of your assistance because um, I need it. I need it a lot. And we're planning on going camping towards the end of April and then I get a lot more reading done when I'm camping like that so um, I need to stock up stock up on my reading supplies so uh, that's all of that um, I do have finished objects and you may have noticed hopefully that I'm wearing one I finished the co-pilot cowl and this is a free pattern it's a free pattern on Ravelry by Dominique Trod. 
and it takes a, a skein of fingering weight yarn it says approximately 376 yards but it takes way more than that so definitely at least 400 yard skein um, this yarn that I used was yarn that Jeanette dyed for me when I did a swap with her back last year and it's an MCN and it's like super special to me and I kept trying to find the right project for it and then decided that this was the right project for it because I just felt like if it's something that's going to hang on my neck, it needs to be as soft as possible. And this just feels so good. It is a perfect length to just wear. I mean, like this is, I think, going to be kind of my go-to uh, cowl. Let me take it off and you can see. So hopefully you can see the texture. Um, what I did is... I knit, you started, I started here, you do a garter, and then you do this like lace pattern, do garter, do the lace pattern, and then as I, I was getting into the final lace pattern, um, I started running out of yarn, and so I only did about half of it, which I think turned out plenty wide for me, and then just started doing the garter, and I did as many garter rows as I could, and kept weighing the yarn, and I think I had a gram of yarn left. I don't know what I did with it, but I don't have very much. It might be in here because this was the bag I was using. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I have left. <laughs> I literally <laughs> used every last drop. So um, it, it's customizable. <laughs> you can make it as big as you want. I think the, the pattern underestimates the amount of yarn that you need. But um, I love it. It feels, and making it out of an MCN is, oh my gosh, it feels so good. It's a good length. It's a good amount of wrap around my neck. I'm definitely going to be making more of these. Um, I think I need one in like every color. So you might see more of that coming up. Um, another finished object that I have is the shawl that I was making for Crystal. And I talked about Crystal last episode, I believe. And it's something that was mentioned on the Naughty Knitwits podcast. Crystal is a knitter and had a baby about a month after having a baby. She had a brain seizure, or she had a seizure. Come to find out she has a brain tumor. So I, so I wanted to make something to send to her. So I made the Hefsavas shawl. And this is by Janine McCarty. She's also known as the Yarn and You Girl. Um, she has a podcast as well, a nice podcast, The Yarn and You Girl. And I dyed up some yarn for Crystal based on her Rav Page show that she liked greens. And I got the shawl done. I loved, loved, loved working on this. It's got so much texture. You never did any one section for too long that you were just like, oh my God, I'm bored of this. No, you just moved right in to another section, another texture. And it's good size. This was um, two, it was three, you, like two and a little bit skeins of yarn. I changed at the end, I changed yarn right about here. Um, so it took, you do need the three skeins of yarn but look at how nice and big that is. This thing is so squishy. I want to make one for myself because I use my campsite shawl, which fits about like this when I watch TV, when I get chilled. And this does it. Being that it's made out of worsted weight yarn, it knitted up like fast. I think I knitted this in a week. I was pretty monogamous with it because I kind of had this deadline for myself to get it done. But I cannot say enough about this. Um, Janine, you wrote a really nice pattern. She gives you stitch counts at each section, which is super helpful so you know whether you're staying on track or not. You've got some baubles in there. Um, I even messed up and just kind of changed the design. Where did I mess up? Right in here, <laughs> I think. Was that it? Yeah, I had started to do... Um, I was supposed to do eyelet and I started to do the lace and then realized I was doing it wrong so I just changed. But being that it has so much texture, it just looks like it's part of the design. So I would highly recommend this and thank you Janine, she's offering um, this pattern up as a giveaway. 
So I'm going to do a thread in the Ravelry group. If you would like to win this pattern, um, go to the go to the thread, and um, all you have to do is answer what color would you make this out of. I do feel like this does best with fairly solid. I don't think a highly variegated yarn would show the texture as much. I think the bobbles might disappear. Can you see the bobbles? I don't know if you can see them. Oh, it's just it's just fun. It was really really fun. Blocked out beautifully. So I can still see you. <laughs> there you go. That's the Hefsba shawl by Janine McCarty. So look it up. If you'd like to win this pattern, um, go to the Rev group and answer that question. Thank you, Janine, so much for that donation. Um, because I think everybody needs to make this. So the beauty of it was I, I used two skeins and then like I said I got into the third skein in this last couple of inches which gave me enough yardage to make this hat. This is the Elk Pass hat by Lone Larch Designs. That's another podcast that I really enjoy. That's Jenny over at Lone Larch, and she has a podcast. She has an Etsy shop that she makes project bags. Oh, it's over there. My favorite sock bag is one of her bags. Um, anyway, this is a hat design that she did, and it just has some neat texture to it, and I thought, oh, perfect. I had enough yarn to make this hat, which has got some really neat texture. It's a super simple pattern, and you think when you get it and you start knitting it, you think, well, did I really need a pattern for it? It's almost basket weave, sort of, but what the key part is, is that she shows you how to make the decreases for the crown, and the crown looks pretty cool, because your pattern stays, you keep your pattern up through the crown, and it is worth the few bucks to have Jenny figure that out. <laughs> super fun project to work on. This was... Um, like I'd mentioned earlier, we went to the coast. I had to go to the coast. Didn't have to. Chose to. Go to the coast to work on, um, do some repair on my mom's place. And so it was really a quick repair. And then we thought, let's just make a day of it. And we went out onto the beach. And I took this hat as my knitting project. Um, I don't normally, I can't normally knit in the car because I get car sick, especially going to the beach. It's a windy road and, you know, it's all just curvy and stuff. But being that this was worsted weight and on a size 7 needle, I believe I knitted it on. Yes, size 7. Um, I could knit it without looking. And so I was able to just keep into the rhythm and just knit as I was, as we were driving, just kind of looking down every once in a while. And so I got a lot of it done just on that drive and then finished it up once I got home. There's no way I could have done this in the car, <laughs> but I could do the body of it. Um, so it was really fun. It was super fun to knit with. I think it's also fun to knit with worsted every once in a while because I'm so used to knitting with um, fingering weight most of the time that having having worsted weight projects was really fun because you see progress really fast. So I'm going to also send this to Crystal with her shawl. So she has an, a hat and a shawl with this yarn that was dyed for her. Um, I did put some of this in the shop in fingering weight. This is my happy go lucky colorway that I came up with when I dyed for this. Um, so there's some of this in fingering weight. I do have an extra skein in this worsted weight that I'll put in the shop and I think I'm going to dye up some other colors tonals like this in worsted weight because I think that's really good for hats and things so I got to get going on that'll get probably happen next week ish or something so um anyway the elk pass hat by Lone Larch I would also recommend that I think this is going to be a really good hat to do when I when I make chemo hats um last year in the month of June which is my birthday month, I did a chemo cap cow, and I'm gonna do the same thing again this year, and I think this is a really good hat for that. The only difference I would make is I would probably knit it on a smaller needle, and I, because it's got, let me move that head out of the way, it's got a lot of stretch to it. Um, this is the small, and it can fit me, and I have a big head, so, um, Unless you have a very large head, knit the small size 
and and consider going down I don't know if part of the reason why it's got so much stretch is because this yarn's got a lot of boing to it um but it fit me really comfortably <laughs> so if I wore hats I'd wear this one you can do a pom-pom I didn't have enough yarn to do a pom-pom um I've never done a pom-pom I'd have to buy a pom-pom maker and I thought what if she doesn't like pom-poms so she can add a pom-pom if she wants to um so the hat and the and the shawl will be sent out now that I've shown you guys and um hopefully hopefully she will wrap herself up in some of this love because that's what I made it with lots of love so um my I am working on oh darn it I got to go get well I'll show my find your fade next time I forgot to bring it upstairs I thought I grabbed it anyway because I was done with everything I don't have socks to start until April I got the shawl done I got the hat done I got the, this cowl done um, I had time to work on my find your fade and it's funny because I hadn't worked on it in a while and I was kind of getting burned out on it kind of and putting it away for a little while and getting back to it was a good thing because when I pulled it back out I had a new love for it. I was like, you know, this is turning out really good. I need to just keep going. I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out. So I think it was good that I took a break from it because um, I have a renewed vigor for it. So I started working on it again. Um, I'll show it next time because um, I want to have a bigger amount done on it to show you. So um, that is that. I did get some new acquisitions that I am excited to share with you. So uh, let me share that with you next. Okay, so um, I love Instagram. I, I post on Instagram and I am thoroughly enabled by Instagram. <laughs> so thankful, but in a good way. I'm very thankful that Jaden of the Little Prairie Pearl, she's Little Prairie Pearl on Instagram, and she has a podcast, which I really enjoy. I think Jaden and I need to hang out. Um, anyway, she posted that Stanwood had their ball winders on sale. And I had been wanting one because it's a jumbo, baby. This makes big balls. Yes, it does. And um, because I'm winding more yarn, I have a bunch of yarn that I have to wind up um, for the mini skein swap that's happening over on the Naughty Knitwits Ravelry group. And my little ball winder was just not fun. It did, a, it did an okay job, but I thought it was time to go to the, break out the big dog. Let me tell you what, this thing winds, it winds differently than the, the little plasticky ones because it's got this arm that goes around and that you're feeding your yarn through this guide and through this guide and it just winds with beautiful tension it's quiet it's just got this little hum and I can wind a ball of yarn with a lot less effort and it'll wind up to 10 ounces and I have a big skein of yarn that I dyed when I went to Blue Moon Fiber Arts back last June that when I'm ready to to um, cast that on to something, it's big. It's it's like a 10 ounce skein. So I needed something big um, to do it. So it was definitely worth the investment. Now, as of this morning, they still have these on sale. So if you go to StanwoodImports.com, um, look for the big ball winder. If you're in the market, it was like 30 bucks off or something like that. So definitely a good find. I'm super excited about this. Makes my job a lot easier and I think it should that should be the thing. I also ordered a skein of yarn. Um, I talked about the Yarn Cafe Creations that um, was a podcast that was new to me that I had started binge watching. I haven't made it all the way through because I haven't had time to watch too many podcasts of late. But I really wanted some of... Um, Christie's yarn. So, Yarn Cafe Creations. I got the colorway Kelpie. And this is a 75% superwash South American yarn, 25% nylon, 437 yards, 100 grams. Um, it definitely has 
it's nice and soft but it definitely has a little bit of a tooth to it and this is pretty wild I could don't think I could wear it although that could be cute I'm gonna make some socks out of this um, I think it'll be really fun you've got kind of peach pink purple red green yellow fluorescent beautiful stuff this will be fun socks um, so that was yarn cafe creations I got that when we were at the coast um, doing some work at my mom's place I we decided to just kind of make the day of it we went out onto the beach the Sun it kind of cleared up and got sunny and cleared up and so we walked on the beach um, and I'll put some footage uh, I've posted footage of Millie doing this when we went on a hike and she really loves doing this on the beach and she runs between Jim and I and it's like her game she cannot wait she knows when we go to the beach this is what she's gonna do and um, so I took some video of her doing it and if you could picture a dog smiling this is my dog smiling because she absolutely loves to do this she runs back and forth I don't know five or ten minutes and then she's good to go and and it's just it's her play thing um, so anyway we did that um, right out right on the beach from where my mom's place is um, this uh, old shipwreck has been un uncovered it only gets uncovered every once in a while depending on how the storms are and I'll put a picture or two here and it is the deck of an old ship from the 1800s that's buried in the sand and with the kind of storms that we've had recently it's uncovered it and then it's going to slowly get covered back up um, as the season goes on and then someday it'll get uncovered again so it was really cool to be able to see that because it only comes out every once in a while and so um, we just kind of walked and just enjoyed being out. I realized how shut in I've been lately because our weather's been really crappy and I just haven't gone anywhere. And I, I've told you before, I'm getting like itchy feet. I need to get out. And so it was a really good day to do that. And then we decided to just kind of take the scenic drive home. And I said, well, you know, there's this yarn shop up in Cannon Beach, a little north of here. Why don't we go there? And I love Cannon Beach. It's a really neat town. It's got a lot of shops and galleries and all that kind of stuff, but it's always really busy. And this is like first weekend of spring break that we're there and I thought, oh my gosh, do I even really want to do that? And it, you know, we, it took a while to find a place to park. And I said, all I really want to do is go try to see this yarn shop. I don't need to do shopping. I don't need to have lunch or anything like that. So found this little yarn shop. It's Coastal Yarns, and I picked up. This is um, some stitch markers from A Needle Runs Through It, and they're little wooden um, embossed, I guess you'd call it, um, little wooden stitch markers. So it says Eat, Sleep, Knit. There's a heart that's got like a stocking net stitch. I love yarn. Heart knitting. Just one more row. Sock knitter super cute she also a uh, needle runs through it also has an Etsy shop um, I might pick some of these up as a giveaway I thought of giving picking these up as a giveaway for the, when I went to get them but I decided I'm keeping them because I love them and I only bought one and at the shop they were $12.75 I don't know what they're like in her sh at the yarn store they're $12.75 I don't know what they're like in her shop Another thing I picked up, and it was something I had been recently looking um, online to purchase, is a needle felting kit. So they had this needle felting kit, and it's a goldfinch and a little bluebird. And I love the little goldfinches. We get them here. Um, i got to put out the right food for them now that spring's kind of coming, and they'll come through and they'll stay through the summer. And they just sit up in my maple trees and tweet and they're bright yellow and they're like my favorite little bird that comes and visits my backyard so I I'm gonna try and make the needle felted version of them so this kit came with the different rovings some needle punch needles um, I think these sticks must be what what you go up in there holds them up <laughs> I'm thinking so it can, contains everything I need to make these two birds so I am going to try needle felting. I did a little needle felting way back when of uh, adding roving to like a felted piece as a decoration like made a little flower but I've never done a sculptural needle felting and I've been wanting to try it so um, this kit gives me everything I need to do that. 
and I didn't want to break into it till I showed you guys. So now I can start making it. That's super cute. Um, that's all I have for acquisitions and all that. Um, I do have a pretty good size shop update that if, um, if you're not interested in it, then this is where the podcast ends. Um, if you'd like to stay to see what I'm going to, what I have put new in the shop and what I'm going to put new in the shop, please stick around for that. All right, shop update. You can find my shop on Etsy. I will put the link in the description box below. And um, I have been working on, I want to try to, been wanting to try and do gradient mini sets. And so I've got a couple of different colors and they're in a bag just because it's easier for me to show you. So there's a little crinkling. So this is the purple mini set. It goes from like a dark eggplant all the way to a very light purple. So you get five 20 gram skeins, a total of 460 grams. This is the denim, sorry for the crinkling, the denim blues. So you go from like a dark indigo to a very light gray blue gradient. I thought that it would be good to work, to use those for like a shawl or something that maybe has segments and then you can gradate your segments or do like we're doing with the find your fade where when you go to change colors you kind of do an every other row and then it goes into the next color i thought that would be really cool with a gradient set so that was the idea behind doing those so i've got a couple of those in each color um got some new sock blanks this one i haven't shown anywhere yet but you've got blue teal blue some brown some bright greens Tilly green. There's that one. This one I showed on Instagram. I love this one. So it has bright orange, kind of looks like fiery orange, goes into a dark purple on the other end. These are likely to kind of stripe if you did socks. Um, if this one doesn't sell soon, I'm going to keep it because <laughs> I love it. This is. Um, Another one that has kind of a um, prairie winkle blue with some aqua and then over dyed with some like Merlot wine color. So these will just be a variegated colorway. And then yarn wise, well, I've restocked some uh, Seaside Rendezvous. Um, this is the new color that I got. It's called Campfire. It's like a um, candy apple red with some golden yellows and where they blend it's a little orange with some charcoal gray. I've got that on the glitter base, which is gold Stellina. And then I've got it on the regular base. Um, this is Little Bunny Foo Foo, which is the periwinkle and like a corally pink color. To go with that is this light periwinkle. Love this color. And then, just a new one, hasn't been in the shop yet, is this dark, rich eggplant purple color. This color goes with a lot of other colors. It goes with something like that, something like that. This is a new color called Fancy Pants. Got teal and red and yellow and kind of greenish but doesn't that look good i think this would make a really neat shawl so as of now this is just called eggplant it's kind of a boring name <laughs> but it's called eggplant i want to i want i want a sweater or something with this color i'm really contemplating knitting a sweater i just have to find the right one i was thinking of the madewell by Hohi Locatelli because I think a fingering weight sweater would be a sweater that I would wear. My concern is it's a fingering weight sweater. It's going to take for freaking ever. I should start now so that I'm ready by fall. Um, and what I notice in comments from people's Ravelry pages and stuff are that the sleeves are tight and I've never knit a sweater before and so I don't want to have to alter a sweater. I know there's that custom fit website and I'm not really sure how to use that so much, 
like it wants you to do a gauge and all that but I need the pattern to know what needles I need to knit with so that I know what gauge it's going to be I don't know it's kind of confusing so anyway side note bring it back in that's my new purple so a couple other colors in the shop as well so please go visit that and see if there's anything that tickles your fancy so that's all I have for you today thank you so much for sticking with me till the end and um, I appreciate every one of you that watches my podcast and subscribes and supports me um, it really does mean a lot otherwise it would just be me sitting here in front of my camera talking to myself I talk to myself all the time anyway but I feel like I'm talking to you when I'm talking to myself in front of a camera. <laughs> so um, I will see you all in a couple of weeks. Have some good spring weather, hopefully. And if you're on spring break, enjoy. Enjoy the kiddos. Um, I will see you back in a couple of weeks. Please join the Knit Along. Please go visit the podcast group on Ravelry. Go to the groups tabs and groups tab and just type in the Creative Obsession and it should come up. And uh, share with me what you're make, what you want to make, and um, yeah, let's do it. So until next time, I will see you guys all later. Thank you so much again for watching.